Welcome to another video. This is some algebra problem, but it is a team selection test from 2009 Ecuador preparation for the International Mathematics Olympiad. What I've observed about questions like this is they're not really hard, 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 hard. You, know, you don't have to be the smartest person in the world to be able to answer it, but you have to know exactly what you need to do. And that's why it is a team selection test, because you have to think in that direction. And all we have to do is to show that what we have under the square root sign is a perfect square, because it's the only way you're going to get a rational number out of this. Anytime you write a square root over a number, that number is automatically irrational unless the number under the square root sign is a perfect square. So it has to be 0 or 1 or 4 or 9 or something of that nature. So that's going to be the mission, no matter what A, B, and C are. Let's get into the video. We will need to show that the radicand under this radical sign is a perfect square. Once we're able to do that, we have the answer. We've done the proof because the square root of a perfect square is a rational number. Whether it's a fraction or it's a whole number, it's an integer, it doesn't matter. It's just a perfect square under a radical sign is rational. So, in order to avoid writing a minus b, b minus c all the time, I'm just going to replace it with a single letter. I'll replace each of them with a single letter and we'll see how it, it looks nicer. So um, let L be equal to A minus B. Let M be equal to B minus C and let N be equal to C minus A. So then the radicand is 1 over L plus 1 over M plus 1 over N. So this is what I need to show is a perfect square. It's going to be a bit harder than, no, L squared. There, all of them have squares. Come on. Okay, so if I can show that this is a perfect square based on this condition that I have, and that A, B, C are distinct rational numbers, then I can, I'm done. I just need to show this is a perfect square. So let's rewrite this, put them together. So we're going to have, if we have a common denominator, it's going to be L squared, M squared, N squared. And on top, if you multiply every term by L squared, M squared, N squared, you're going to get M squared, N squared plus, here you're going to get L squared, N squared, and here you're going to get L squared, M squared. Okay, now, looking at this, remember what the mission is. We're supposed to show that this is a perfect square. The denominator is clearly a perfect square, right? But the top is still the sum of perfect squares. The sum of squares is not a square. Yes, I thought I was wrong. The sum of squares is not a square. That's why, that's why Pythagorean theorem, when you use the square of a plus the square of b, you don't always get a, an integer, a rational number. Sometimes it's the square root of two, square root of three that you get. Okay, so we have to be, we have to be wary of this one because what we have is the sum of squares if only I can find a way to write this as a perfect square, I'll be done. So I'm going to start ignoring the denominator because it's already a perfect square. If I can get a perfect square here. So I'm going to say um, 1 to express m squared n squared plus l squared n squared plus l squared n squared s a perfect square. Okay. 
This is where you start looking at the original information and what you were given. Remember, we did some replacement, okay? So what exactly can you do here? I'm looking at M. Oh. Let's go back. Let's go back here. So this is L. This is M. This is N. Can we do some substitution? Because dealing with three different letters might be hard. Can we write one of them in terms of the other two? Or can we write all of them in terms of only one letter? We have to find a relationship between L, M, and N. So let's go here and see what happens. Remember, they're all distinct, which means this is not zero. A is not equal to B. B is not equal to C, and C is not equal to A. And because they're all distinct, we can... Well, let's see what happens. Okay, let's assume... Um, see, notice. I want you to notice this. Notice that L plus M plus N will be equal to this plus this plus this. So that's going to be A minus B plus B minus C plus C minus A. What do you observe? A minus A becomes zero. Minus B plus B gives you zero minus c plus c gives you zero. So when you add up all these three things, you're gonna end up with zero. So we can say that L plus M plus N is equal to zero, which implies I can write one of them in terms of the other two. I'm wondering which one I should take. Which letter should I get rid of? Let me get rid of L, okay? This implies that L, mm -hmm, let's do L will be equal to if you write it in terms of these two, it's going to be negative m minus n. So let's say negative m plus n. With this, I can do a substitution and go back here and replace l wherever I see l squared, right? Let me start here because I'm going to have to erase that, okay? So I know this implies the numerator Okay, the numerator will be equal to, um, what do I have? I have m squared, n squared plus, instead of writing l squared, I'm going to write negative m plus n squared, negative m plus n, everything squared, times n squared. That's what you have here, plus negative m plus n, everything squared m squared. Lm, come on. Okay, lm squared. Okay, I fixed it. <laughs> I'm sure someone has been wondering what he, what did he do? So there we go. Now, this is what we need to play with and make sure this becomes a perfect square. Your algebra skills have to be alive, very alive. So from here, all I'm good, first things first, I need to get rid of these minuses because a minus sign under a radical sign is room for trouble. So I'm going to quickly raise this to power. So I'm going to say the numerator equal to what we have here is going to be m squared n squared. And this is going to be plus m plus n squared n squared plus this is going to become m plus n squared m squared. Okay, that's what's on top. Okay, things are going to get a bit not as sweet as I want them to be. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to replace every multiplication with another letter so it's less confusing because the more you write, the more confusing it gets, okay? Because these things, when I start multiplying out, will become crazy. So what I wanna do is, I'm gonna replace stuff, okay? So I'm gonna say, let's rewrite this as mn squared. That's better. Plus m plus n squared n squared plus m plus n squared m squared 
So let's say let mn be equal to, I need a letter to use um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I need nice ones. I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, T. I like T. Okay. <laughs> so let's do R and T. So M, N equals R and M plus N equal T. And this is going to clearly become so we have our numerator will be equal to mn is r squared plus t squared n squared plus this is going to be what is m plus n again it's t squared m squared now see what happens what is common to these two i've got t squared. So here I have r squared plus t squared into n squared plus m squared. That's what I have. Ah, almost a perfect square. But this is not a perfect square. But it's almost a perfect square because remember that the sum of squares can be written as the square of a sum minus Aha, minus 2 times the product. So we can actually write this. Let me show you. See, so if you have a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. So when you want to write this, you can write this as this minus this. And that's what I'm going to do here. So this is going to be r squared plus t squared multiplied by, instead of this, I'm going to write n m plus n let's write it as m plus n squared minus 2 m n that's what we have in there and what you have in here remember we already replaced m plus n with so we don't get confused with t and m n is r so this is going to translate into r squared plus t squared plus what is m plus n um t that's t squared minus 2r. Nice. So at this point, I can distribute and say r squared plus t squared, t, now t to the fourth minus 2rt squared. This is what I said. Your algebra skills have to be amazing because if they are not amazing, you would not see the answer here. You won't see that this is a perfect square. Let me rewrite it. This is the same thing as t to the fourth minus 2rt squared plus r squared. What do you think this is? This is a perfect square, right? How would you know it's the perfect square? Write it in terms of the squares of t. Then the coefficient of the middle term is going to be negative 2r. What is half of negative 2r? It's going to be negative r. If you square negative r, you're going to get r. And that's it. This, you've, you've generated a perfect square. So you have t squared minus r squared. Remember the mission was to express this as a perfect square. And there it is. Done. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.